Heinbach and it's good to have you back. I've built a 1950s style experimentelle elektronische Musikstudio right here in our basement. It is inspired by the famous German experimental studios, usually run by broadcast companies such as WDR and SWR, where pioneers like Stockhausen and Hans-Peter Halle went on journeys into new sounds. That is why you will find vintage test equipment, tape and obscure early electronic instruments here, similar to the ones used in the experimental studios. In this video I'm going into detail how I set this up, the equipment choices that I made, the routing choices, the effects choices and of course the reason behind all this madness. Maybe this will inspire you when you set up your own musical space, be it big or small, or you make the next patch in your digital audio workstation. <laughs> are going to encounter a bunch of equipment here that's absolutely impossible to find unless you are as mad as I am and dedicate a lot of time to it. But fear not, there's the Heinpack. Plugins I made with audio thing from some of these machines. There's dials, a test equipment channel stripper based on passive bandpass filters such as you see here. It's even available on iOS now, so you can have test equipment on the go without having to do all the heavy lifting. Add over. I was gifted an Electronium, a wonderful vacuum tube based synthesizer hiding inside an accordion and I fell in love with this instrument and I decided I need to create something with it. the idea for my performance Schlaufenzeit was born and I performed this one time and I had so much fun that I decided I'm going to record a whole album in this style. In short, Schlaufenzeit is built around the Electronium, some test equipment used for rhythms and a tape loop that I'm running right behind me. And that is quite a big setup, so I needed to have a space where I could have it all set up to rehearse and to record the album. And my studio upstairs was not big enough for that. So I went into the cellar. And that is actually a big problem. The cellar is not a good studio place at all. The ceiling is not very high. There's an open stairway that leads up to my wife's office. And it's not possible to do acoustics in here in any way. So I had to make one tough choice, at least for this part right here. No monitors. But that's kind of okay, because I'm using a lot of mics on amps to record the Electronium, and those would have interfered with monitors anyway. The headphones that I choose are the, oh, here they are, Sony, 7506 of all the closed back headphones that I tried. I found these to be the ones that translated best to other systems. Over the years I had all the classics by Sennheiser, AKG, Biodynamic, Shure and yeah, the Sonys are still an oldie but goldie. Because I'm playing a monophonic instrument where I can only have one note happening at a time, I needed a looper to give me more musical variation to improvise on. So instead of using a boss looper or something similar, I decided on a tape loop. And that's running from here to here through a Nagra 4.2.
routed the tape past the array set so I can record sound on sound. And every pass gives me a wonderful degradation of sound. So these things just keep on flowing and flowing and flowing. A signal seems to disappear rather than fade out. And all the mechanical movement of the tape adds an uncertainty and fragility to the sound that I find contrasts wonderfully with the more heavy drums. The tape loop is processed by this big Wandel and Goltermann high and low pass filter. It's so huge and it doesn't do more than filter high and low pass. But A, it sounds wonderful and B, it's perfect on stage because people can see what I'm doing and there's a complete relatability to my action, taking away the highs or adding lows, to what's happening sonically. And that's something I'm really interested in, to make electronic music nachvollziehbar, to be relatable. I have two of these amazing filters now, thanks to dear viewer Jochen, who passed on part of his father's collection to me. The second one I use with the WEM mixer, which is my sub mixer right here. I picked this WEM mixer because they've kind of a reputation for sounding pretty good. And it has a fantastic spring reverb in there, but it was just very, very cheap. I think I paid a hundred bucks for this. And for something this good looking and fully working, that's pretty amazing. If you've seen my video on the technique of pinging, you will know that filters can become instruments when you send them a sharp impulse that excites them. And that's what I'm using mostly for drums here. I've set up a bunch of filters that get trigger signals and they create the rhythm together. Many of these are the same ones that you can find in the old VDR studio and I absolutely adore their sound. There's something special about the coil filtering process that makes it just beautifully sing. But what actually creates the rhythm? What is sending out these trigger signals? I've had a bunch of beautiful test equipment, pattern generators that I used to create these rhythms, but one after the other, they all failed. And the only surviving ones are up in my wall in the main studio. So especially since I want to take this live at some point on the road with me again, I need something that's reliable and fun. And I choose the Soma Pulsar 23. that looks like a piece of lab equipment already with all its crocodile jacks and it interfaces easily with the test equipment and you can create rhythms by simply playing it or using the clock divider and that makes it a very open playground. Plus it helps that it also sounds good on its own when combined also with all the test equipment. My main mixer here is this Tascam M208. 
I picked this because at Willem Twe Studios, hi Hans and Rickard, they are using these to mix their test equipment there. And these can take the levels that a UBM, for example, puts out like a champ and they overdrive nicely. The EQs are decent and you get a good amount of routing, at least for a vintage mixer. So newer mixers, I struggled to find some that have a good character that I enjoy. They're mostly a bit stale. So I have to go for this vintage gear. And I got this one service from Soundgas, which helps because while I love this, it's definitely better to have this fully recapped in the studio because in the end, everything comes here together. I'm recording straight to this Nagra. There's no way I can do corrections later because this is just a two-track machine. I love recording to it because A, it sounds fantastic and the tape sound fits beautifully with the general sound of this project and B, it forces me to be very in the moment because at maximum speed, I only get seven minutes of recording time. So I better be good once I start <laughs> upping the channels. In effect, I'm too staying vintage. Now, I don't have any digital reverb or delay in here, but I still need to create rooms. So I'm using an amp that's built on a 1930s patent. I'm using the Eowave Metallic Resonator. This uses a gong instead of a speaker to amplify a signal and it creates some unreal resonances. Especially because I'm recording it with these Sennheiser stereo mics, which are wonderful because they are the MD409 capsules, which are rather sought after now. E-Wave have just relaunched the resonator, so you can get it in real or you can use the plugin from the Heinpack called Gong Amp, which models this one. Other effects I use are two tape echoes. The Roland Space Echo, which is especially wonderful due to its beautiful preamp that adds a grit and dirt to everything. And then this very odd one. This is a DIY copy of the Soviet time BEAG AX200 Echo. A vacuum tube based echo, very simple, but I love its sound. It's very gritty and the input stage with the vacuum tubes overdrives beautifully. I especially enjoy running the Pulsar 23 through this. I've set up the mixer so aux1 goes to the loop, aux2 goes to the space echo and group1 goes to the master bus and group3 and 4 go to the gong. And I'm looping the gong back in here which can be dangerous because it can create some fantastic distortions. On the electronium I also run a Moga Foga ring modulator because what would an early electronic music studio be without ring modulation? And I've got some other synthesizers here, some Italian ones that I mostly use to be basis for drones right now to be filtered because then you can create some unreal sounds from regular synthesizers, which is all part of the fun of using bandpass filters. They create yeah, something that's both old, yet to me feels very fresh and new again.
that's almost it for this part of Studio B. There is of course more, but I can show you that because we're still renovating and I have to keep moving bikes and other stuff in and out just to film this video. But this is one of the most fun places I've ever set up. Even though I had to make a lot of compromises in terms of yeah, acoustics and such, I'm still very much enjoying this. And if I feel that I'm too limited here, I can always take up the recording to the big studio and work on it further and do overlaps. Though I'm careful with that, because the goal is that I'm gonna take parts of this at some point on the road again, and then I wanna be able to play and perform as it happened. And if I have too many backing tracks, I don't want backing tracks. I wanna be free and improvise and play on the pieces that I've created. That's it for this video. If you have any more questions, please leave them in the comments below. And thank you all for watching. I'll be seeing you in the next one. Bye.